Hi there. So I uh, recently picked up a uh, Make Noise O Coast, No Coast, Zero Coast. And um, if you have one of them, you know there's a lot of parameters behind it that um, you can access with the program A and program B button combinations. And uh, I just wanted to whip up something that would uh, be a little bit easier to use, especially as I'm learning it. Um, so I used my iPad and a really uh, cool application called MIDI Designer Pro to basically rig up a system to send out CCs to the no coast uh, so you can set those parameters um, in the programming mode. But then it's also got a few little widgets on it that help you uh, do some stuff that's not technically in the uh, programming mode, but it's kind of a pain to access. Um, like leg turning, on leg or, uh, turning on Portamento and changing Portamento time um, and doing some of those kind of things. So anyway, this is it. It's a, a layout for MIDI Designer Pro for the iPad. Um, I'll have a link to the layout that you can download from MIDI Designer Pro uh, in the description. Um, I also want to apologize. I only have like one mic because I don't normally do mic stuff. Uh, and so this is uh, the only mic I have and it's one of those mics you have to talk into. So there's gonna be lots of pops and hopefully there won't be a whole lot of mouth breathing um, to make the synth meme guys upset. Anyway, um, so the layout in MIDI Designer Pro is set up. There's a right side and a left side. The left side is just the instructions. I didn't want it to be a full screen thing because a lot of times I like to have other controls on the other page. Um, so really the right page is the only one that really has any controls. The left side is just some basic instructions. You can get rid of that. Um, and obviously it's MIDI Designer Pro, so all of this stuff is editable. Like if you don't like the positioning, you want to expand on it, you know, knock yourself out. <clears throat> so what we have here is uh, the left side is MIDI A, right side is MIDI B. Um, all the way down here, I've got a little keyboard that's included. The keyboard is quote unquote velocity sensitive. If you press low, it's low. If you press high, it's a higher velocity. Um, there's a pitch bend. So it's like a pitch wheel. And then um, there's also a little lock, which will hold the keys down, uh, which is nice when you're doing things like arpeggios and stuff. I mean, even though there's a built-in arpeggiator um, in the no coast and you can turn on a latch mode, it's kind of a pain to kind of go back and forth where I think this is just, at least for testing, this isn't intended to be like a performance tool. It's really more of just like a utility. So you can kind of like mess with some of the parameters before you use like a sequencer or a better keyboard. Um, so obviously, in order for you to access any of these, uh, the no coast has to be in program mode. So press down A and hold it, and then they'll blink, and then the program A will stay lit. At this point, um, all of the things you normally would do with like your tapping program A to go through the pages and hitting program B and all those other obscure button combinations, you can kind of do with uh, the buttons that are on the MIDI Designer Pro layout. Um, so let's see, the, probably one of the easiest things I can kind of show initially would be just turning on MIDI A, or a MIDI B C V to velocity. I'm gonna note, put it on velocity. And also there's no sync. So uh, MIDI Designer Pro doesn't know the status of the no coast. So these buttons will sometimes get out of whack with what the no coast is actually set up as. So a lot of times what you can just do is press one button and then press another one to go back to what you really want it to be. Um, so in this case, I've got, I just turned on MIDI B C V to velocity. Right now it's not doing anything. But if we take MIDI B C V and patch it to some place where we can kind of hear it, so let's patch it to maybe overtone. That's not a very good example. Come and turn on a multiply. There's a slight timbre shift. Um, I'm like I'm pretty new with the NoCo, so trying to find a patch that actually demonstrates some of these things can be a pain. Good one maybe is uh, the decay level. Anyway, um, so now you can see that when I press low on the key, it makes the, the decay is pretty quick per the knob. When I press higher, it lasts longer. And so basically you're making it velocity sensitive. I can put it back to note. And it doesn't do anything. Put it on that. 
we can also turn on things like the mod wheel. So you can send mod wheel to this. And there's a mod wheel built into this as well. Let's turn the mod wheel up. The decay lasts longer. So anyway, and basically, so MIDI A and MIDI B are gonna basically work exactly the same. Um, then you got your other things that you can set for gate, uh, so you can make it uh, MIDI B, um, go into LFO. So if I go to that gate, it turns into like a square LFO. Let me put that onto something like, I don't know, multiply. Hold on a note. And you can hear it pulsing. So there I was uh, just going from mod greater than 50% to LFO, so you can see that it kind of swaps in and out. So basically the nice thing is all of these things basically work, um, and it's much more visual. So you can change the MIDI channels, so here's a little knob, so you can change it to all, which is the default, and then this thing scrolls down so you can choose any one of 16 MIDI channels. Same for MIDI B. Um, pitch bend range, so channel A pitch bend range you can set, so right now it, if you double, if you triple tap and MIDI Designer Pro goes to default, I've got the default set to 12 semitones. So if I hit this, and let me go down an octave because that note's a little high. Here's pitch bend. I'm gonna change the pitch bend range. So anyway, it's a nice way to kind of like set those things. Um, Another one is obviously you can turn the ARP on by holding down program A and program B, but you can also do it within this. Um, and you can leave it in traditional mode. You don't have to go to latch because you can use the little uh, keyboard lock um, sustain button. So you turn on ARP. And the nice thing is you can un unhold, unlatch all of the notes that are being held just by hitting the lock key again. So it's a little bit easier way to kind of set up some arpeggios if you don't have another keyboard attached and you only want to play with this. Um, another feature I mentioned that is not technically in the programming area, but is in the, um, it's still like a CC command, is being able to turn portamento on and off and, and changing the portamento time. So I'm going to hold on a, a note. Actually, let me uh, turn arp off. Hold on a note and hit another button, another key. And now if I turn on portamento, turn up portamento time, you can hear it slide. So anyway, it's a nice way to access that feature when there's no um, control on the no coast. Um, Let's see, there's an aftertouch, so you can route uh, aftertouch um, to different um, modulation areas, theoretically. To me, it doesn't seem to work a whole lot different than just the mod. Um, and since it doesn't seem to do much other than controlling pitch, it's one thing in the manual, it doesn't really mention aftertouch any place, so I'm not exactly sure how it works but I included the CC so if you can change it. So if you know how that works, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, another thing that's nice is the clock division. So if I have a patch set up, let me just put slope into cycle. Um, let me put clock to dynamics. Actually, now let me put clock to contour. I'm going to, let me turn this down, and then I'm going to route the cycling slope, end of cycle, to tempo in, and then I can choose the divisions that I want. So here, that's at one, I can change the tempo, 
So now, slope is sending a steady pulse into tempo in, but I just turned clock divisions up by six. So as slope is sending those pulses, every six pulse, it comes out of the clock into my contour circuit. So anyway, it's a nice way to get some rhythmic divisions. And if you don't have like a uh, MIDI controller that actually shows you the values you're sending to it, it can be kind of a pain to set those up. Um, to me, it seems like a pretty powerful feature to have buried, but you know, that's the way it is. But with this little widget, you can set that up pretty easy. Uh, let's see, what else can I show? Oh, the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Oh, the one thing I'll show is the MIDI clock. So I'm gonna go to a little app called uh, MIDI Link Sync. So right now, Ableton Link is running on the iPad at 120 beats a minute. I'm going to set this as my, uh, my MIDI interface going into the no coast. And I'm gonna start MIDI clock. So now it's sending MIDI clock to the no coast. And I can activate that by turning on MIDI clock. So let me uh, kind of demonstrate that again. So coming out, going into contour from clock, I'll take it a tap to get it going. Actually, it's not going. Why is it not going? There we go. Because I have MIDI clock going. So let me exit out of program mode. Okay, so now I've got a tempo going. And right now it's the internal tempo. If I turn on MIDI clock, actually I have to go back into program mode. Turn on MIDI clock. Now it's responding to MIDI clock. If I hit speed up the clock, the no coast responds. Anyway, it's a nice little feature, um, and having the ability to kind of turn that on and off uh, from within this widget. So if you want to clock arpeggios, or you want that clock to go through um, and remain synced to you know other gear, it's a great way to turn it on and off. So anyway, that's basically it. Um, go to MIDI Designer Pro, or actually go to the iStore, I App Store. Go to the App Store, download MIDI Designer Pro, uh, then download the, uh, the layout that should be linked in the description. Anyway, hope somebody finds this useful.